Welcome back. In this lesson, we'll go ahead and model in the windshield. And the method that we're going to use, we'll, we can use that method to, to create the rest of the windows. I've got 3D Studio Max open here with the corresponding start file. And what we can do is switch to the top viewport and just zoom into the windshield area so we see what's going on here. And so I've seen this done a few ways. I've seen where one models just a simple piece of geometry, like a plane or so. And then you go through and snap those verts to the open area of the windshield. And what I'm doing here is I'll just attach that right now so we can see what's going on. Then you switch to vertex mode, you enable snap. And you basically just snap to a few key areas. Until you've got the windshield area filled out like so. And then the next step from here would be to either use your Swift Loop tool. And once you click, you can hold Control and Alt, and you can reposition that loop. Just drag and you can move it to wherever you'd like it to go. But we'd use our Swift Loop tool and just cut some loops in and continue to snap to the rest of our geometry. Now, one drawback to this method is you'll have to do a lot of hand tweaking because, as you can tell from the side view, for example, this vert needs to go up so you get sort of like a, a slope or a curve in the glass there. And so it's just a lot of work to go through and, and tweak all those. And so you might end up getting some small imperfections in your windshield or things like that. The other drawback to this method is that you'll have to turbo smooth your windshield with the rest of your model as well, which is not a huge deal, but sometimes you want to just keep the window object separate and have it modeled at a, a pretty good quality initially. So for that, the second method is to use the surface modifier along with splines. And I prefer that method because it's a little less tweaking as far as getting the curvature and the topology comes out a bit cleaner. All right. And so to do that, you know, you'll just go to create, shapes, line, and we're just going to draw from our top view. A simple shape. And so once you have that drawn in, it's just a matter of switching to your right viewport, enabling vertex mode, grabbing the verts, and repositioning them. And so you'll spend a little bit of time tweaking these just to kind of get them into position and see what's going on. But the beauty of, of this method here is once you've got your verts in place, you can now go through and right click and choose different methods. And that allows you to actually tweak the curvature of your verts. And so for example, this vert here I can grab, convert it to a Bezier corner. And then I can go through, or actually, let's go ahead and convert it to Bezier. I can adjust the handle here to get that to match up with our geometry. The other thing you can do once you're working on that is you can go to Refine and click Refine there to get some points added. And now, Similarly, you can control the way these points work. When you click on a vert, you'll get the control handles. You can also click in the direction there, and that will let you move it depending on where the, the gizmo is highlighted. 
And so I'd switch back to the right viewport. Just grab my handle here. I'll turn on my blueprint so I can see what's going on and just adjust that. Adjust that as well. Switch to my top viewport, see what we're working with. And I'll just go to refine, add a vert there, move that in. And as you can see, we're getting that, that form in. And something to, to be mindful of is we're going to add a surface modifier to this spline cage here. And the surface modifier needs to have four points. Typically, four points going across your object for it to, to surface properly. So for example, we've got one, two, three, and four. That would be fine, but we've got a point kind of just hanging out here. So what we have to do is just go across, get to refine, and drop another point there. You can see that goes across there. And now we would need to connect these two points. And for that, you can go back to create, line, uncheck where it says start new shape, turn on your snaps, make sure you're set to vertex. And what we're going to do is just drag out, I'll just isolate this here so we can better see what's happening. I'll just drag out a, a line across here to connect these two. And to, to see where my verts are placed, with my main spline selected, I can click on display. And then we can go to vertex ticks. And that will show us exactly where, exactly where the verts are on this this object. And so you can just click and drag. And so that should be snapped in place there. And it's going across there. And then we repeat the process. Click, drag, drag. And actually, let's go ahead and delete that. What we'll do now is select remain shape and just attach line that we did there. And from this point on, we can go back to modify. Vertex mode. And just, you have to make sure that that's actually attached. There we go. And we'll go to vertex mode. And we'll add refine there to get a vert. And refine there to get a vert. basically one on each. Now what we can do here is just grab any one of these verts and just snap them together like so. With that complete, you can right click and choose smooth and see if that will get you a nice little slope going across and that looks good. And so now we've got basically a, a cage with everything divided by four points. And so this should work pretty well with the surface modifier. It might take a little tweaking here and there, but let's go ahead and apply the surface modifier and see what happens. Here we go. And so now it does that. And as you can see, this is actually pretty clean and smooth so far. And if you want to get a better look at the topology, you can add an edit poly modifier and turn off snaps. And let's just go back to our object and turn off our vertex ticks. Exit isolation mode. As you can see, we've got it sitting here like so. Now, the rest of the work would simply be going back to your spline network and adjusting any one of these points to kind of get things to tighten up a bit. The other thing you can do as well is you can go back to refine, add points as you need them. Try not to add too many though, because then that just sort of defeats the purpose of using the, the surface modifier. But you just go through and add points like so. But just to be sure that if, if you add a point here, you'd put one going across each of these segments here so the surface knows how to work in that. The other thing to pay attention to as well is where it says steps, we can increase or decrease that. And that basically affects the curvature 
and the density of your final model. And we're missing a piece here because we didn't go through and add the rest of the verts to complete the, the spline network here. And so that's the process I'd use to get the windshield in. And then I'd go ahead and do that for the rest of the windows. That concludes this lesson. I'll see you in the next one.